It's about time we processed another image. Let's go. Hi, and welcome to episode 147 of Understanding Dark Table. This image was from the last group shoot that I conducted almost 10 years ago now. Wow. Uh, as you can see, massively underexposed. So let's grab our exposure and get our midtones to where we want them to be, which is probably yeah, somewhere around about there. Yeah, 2.2. Yep, somewhere about there. Uh, not loving what's happening with the sky there. We'll come back to that in a sec. This was shot at 400 ISO on my A850. Uh, so this is my old camera. If I was shooting this on my A7 III, I don't think I would have anywhere near the amount of noise that this has got. As you can see, the noise in the sky is pretty horrendous. So let's go and grab Denoise Profiled, which on its own does a pretty good job of smoothing out that sky. Uh, it does tend to soften details in the face a little, so I might just go for a drawn mask. Yes, I had had a previous crack at this. That's why the uh, mask was already the correct size and in the, in the right spot and everything uh, so if we have a look at our mask we are now masking just Taylor's face which means that the noise reduction is only happening on her face that is not what I want I want the inverse of that so where it says drawn mask we click on the negative indicator that inverts the mask and I might just widen that feather just a little bit just to soften the transition there so now we're applying noise reduction to the entire image but not to her face uh, there's no noise evident there and i do want to be able to sharpen up the detail in her face and her costume uh, as we move through so let's go and have a look at filmic because i i'm not loving what's going on with the sky over here it's Part of the way Filmic was designed was as pixels get closer to white and closer to black, Filmic desaturates them. And in this instance, I'm not sure that that's really what we want. So let's try backing off our white relative exposure. Yeah, I'm not loving it. It looks to me like we've got this sort of salmon color close to the horizon but then above it we've got this band that is more orange than salmon and then it starts to merge into the mauves of the blue hour sky i don't normally use sigmoid but i'm going to give it a go and see what happens sigmoid whoa okay can't argue with that. That's pretty much what I was hoping for, was these smoother transitions of hue from the brightest pixels in the sky through to the, the darker mauves and purples in the you know, top portion of the sky. On this occasion, I actually think Sigmoid's doing a better job than Filmic. Uh, I'm just going to skew this because I was hoping to bring up a little bit of the detail that's in here. And wow, I'm... Gonna have to uh, go and look for something else to lift those tones up, I think. Let's try. Again, tone equalizer. Not a module I normally would reach for, but we'll give it a go. We'll start with our masking, and we want to get this gray bar to stretch as wide as possible across the dark gray bar that's behind it, but without the yellow indicators showing up. What we are trying to do is maximize the spread of our luminosities across this graph. Let's go 0.06. Let's go 0.07. Beautiful. I reckon that's as good as we're going to get. Now let's see what we can do to bring up those dark tones. Really? Where are you? Oh, 
okay right I, I figured they were going to be much darker tones than they were okay so now we've brought a little bit of uh, detail in there i should have just moused over and i would have seen that wouldn't i don't think we can push that too far because the contrast of the image is just going to fall apart if we push it too hard but that's done a pretty good job of bringing up some of that detail let's try a bit of sharpening on taylor there's a multitude of things we could do for sharpening i tend to just go with the sharpen module myself we'll give it a go see what it does let's zoom in here to 100 percent i'm just going to draw a very quick mask around taylor's head and top half of her body here i want to soften the transition but bring the whole thing in a little bit let's increase our radius just a bit and let's boost the amount let's turn off our mask and let's turn off the module without and with that certainly does sharpen things up somewhat but let's check some other options for sharpening we could use the local contrast module so if we switch that on and we'll go raster mask and we'll go use the same mask as the sharpen module and let's go for some detail to be honest i don't think local contrast is really helping on this image so i think we're going to skip local contrast entirely contrast equalizer that's what i was looking for we'll go my sharpening preset that's maybe a little bit too intense so we won't worry about the raster mask but we are just going to back off the intensity of the sharpening just a little bit there so without with all right let's take a snapshot of that so that we can compare this against the sharpen module so let's come back to there turn sharpen on and then let's compare our two versions there's not much in it to be honest but i think i'm preferring the contrast equalizer just marginally make contrast equalizer our history by clicking on the little icon there and then we can throw away our snapshot now that we've got that in there we're currently processing the entirety of the image we really don't need to do that so what i'll do is just go and draw a very rough mask around taylor like so and that will have applied the sharpening just to her but not to the rest of the image now yes it is going to be applying it to the sky in here there's a couple of little bits that are being processed that probably don't need to be but you know what let's do it properly so we will go back to the mask and what we will do is we'll add a couple of extra nodes so that we can bring this in tight like so what we'll do is we'll actually just cut off her arm and i'll show you why in just a second i'm not going to worry too much about the rock down there because there's so much detail in the rock that i don't think you would notice whether there was sharpening occurring there or not so i'm just going to go around her boot like that we'll just come out a little bit wider here so we pick up that edge of the red uh, cape and then what we will do is go for a paintbrush just gonna paint down her arm like so and i probably should do the same thing with the sword yeah very tight feather on this one and i think it's very difficult to uh to draw a straight line with just the mouse so i've let go and then that way i can just come down to here and i can start placing these nodes where i need them to pick up the curvature of the blade and that should do a pretty decent job i would imagine if we were to check the mask that we've got that's what we've got and i think that is doing the job let's zoom in 
switch off things are a little bit softer yep that sharpens it up nicely in terms of the crop I didn't leave a whole lot of extra space in the framing of this one um, so what I might do is just go freehand make sure we get the top of her head and the bottom of her boots and we'll call that the crop in terms of color I'm thinking it's looking pretty damn good already it doesn't need more saturation it's if anything maybe we could work on skin tones because obviously she's got makeup on her face and you know her body is not quite the same color so maybe we could go I'd be inclined to go color balance RGB for that and I will start by masking out the areas that I want and I should have gone drawn and parametric but I'm going to mask out the areas that I do want to affect and so if we have a look at that mask those are the areas that we're going to process now what we want to do is select based on here all right go for saturation that in like so and then for lightness this is where we should be able to really exclude the bits that are not her skin yeah that's starting to clean up pretty well and we'll just soften off that fall off a little bit that's a pretty good selection there is a bit of her hair which is being selected so in order to negate that I will draw a mask like so that path there we will need to find in the mask manager we're on color balance rgb that will be path five because that's the last one we did right click and go difference and that should exclude yep so that has now excluded her hair from that range of uh, hues that we were targeting so now what we want to do is try and match the intensity of the makeup on her face so we will probably go for a little bit of vibrance and chroma and we just want to shift this ever so slightly not that way this way and we probably want to darken that just a touch so we'll go mid-tones and highlights there we go that's better bring that back a bit yeah I think that's pretty much there I feel like that's a, a slightly better match of the skin tones from there to there yeah, I think that more closely resembles what we've got on her face with the makeup that we had on her. I think that pretty much does it. When I originally processed this image, I didn't do as well a job as I've done now. But what I did was I exported it as a 16-bit TIFF, took it into GIMP, and then applied a filter that gave it a sort of a, a drawn look, like a pencil drawing or a and uh, it sort of gave it a bit of a cartoon look and then mucked around with some you know fake text like it was a frame out of a, a comic book but I'm not going to do that now but um, yeah that was that was what I originally did with it all right I hope you got something out of this that you didn't know before yeah questions comments sing out down below and I will catch you in the next one